apologies for addressing you in English. I, my friends, my friends, it is an honor to be here. It truly is. And, you know, the one thing that is absolutely clear to me is that it would not have been possible to have this kind of meeting. It would not have been this possible to have this kind of meeting 10, 15 years ago. But here you are, and not just a few of you. And it is a real endorsement of what you are doing and what you are trying to achieve. I thought I, thought I would... Um, leave you with three very brief memories that I have and which I hold very dear. The first one is so long ago that I can't remember when it was. Uh, it was inside Eritrea and I was standing under the stars. It, I was representing the British Labour Party, which has sent me to your Congress. It was the first Congress of women and the first Congress of uh, workers of the EPLF. And I stood under the stars in a small amphitheater made of stone. And we sang the Internationale. And there were colleagues there who sang it in Spanish. There were colleagues there who sang it in Arabic. And of course, there were people there who sang it in Tigrinya. And it was the most marvelous and most moving event that I can possibly remember. The, other, the second time was again in Eritrea and it was looking down from the trenches that were around Keren. And I could see the artillery of the Ethiopian army firing up at our trenches. And I tell you, I was very pleased that those trenches were deep because it was dangerous. And overhead, you could see the planes coming round and bombing. And I stood there and I could see and I reported for the BBC. And the third time I was there was in 1991, when I went to see a friend of mine, Trish Silkin, I don't know, may, some of you may remember her. She was the Oxfam representative in Asmara. And I stayed with her for a few weeks, and it was the most joyful occasion of my life. The joy, the happiness, the freedom that people felt those days in 1991 is unforgettable. It's etched on my memory. So what I would say to you here is that this is not the end of the beginning. It's not the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the beginning of the end of this dictatorship. I, just in case you think that this is going to be a, uh, an easy read, I thought I would give you a poem which is... 201 years old today. It is by Percy Bysshe Shelley, and some of you may know it. It's Ozymandias, and I think it tells us a lot about what happens to dictators. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tells that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive stamped on those lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on ye my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the stone and level sands stretch far away. How long will it be before your own Ozymandias, who tells you now, look on my works, ye mighty and despair. How long will it be before he is just a shattered wreck? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin Plaut. We appreciate it.
We appreciate the love you have for our people, for our country. You stand for justice, freedom, and democracy. We love you so much. Thank you. Give him a clap.